Okay, so get this right. Today's deep dive, we're not looking at charts or data or anything like that. Oh, we're yeah. going full on fantasy. Really? Yeah, we're diving into the world of, get this, a young writer calls himself Forrest, who's dreamt up this whole world of magic and, well, you gotta hear this. Okay, I'm intrigued, lay it on me. What's so special about this Forrest? and their world. So we're talking dragons, we've got these things called druids, wands, like the whole shebang. But here's the kicker. They wrote it all down as poetry. Poetry, interesting. You don't see that every day. What kind of stuff are we talking about here? Epic poems, rhyming couplets, free verse? Oh, it's rhyming, all right. And it's not just like roses are red kind of stuff. This is, uh, Forrest is tackling some pretty complex themes, morality, power, you know, the whole nine yards. Now that you mention, I do recall something about Forrest exploring the duality of magic. You hit the nail on the head. It's one of the first things that jumped out at me, actually. Forrest doesn't shy away from the idea that magic can be, well, kind of scary. Yeah, there's always a flip side, right? I mean, even in fairy tales, magic can be used for good or evil. Exactly. And Forrest lays it out pretty clearly with this one line, magic is power and power shall devour. Ooh, chills. That's ominous. Mm. So it's not all wands and wizards having tea parties then. Definitely not. This world has a dark side. Speaking of dark, uh, we need to talk about the zombies. Zombies? Wait a minute. Zombies and magic. What's the connection there? So Forrest keeps coming back to this idea of zombies being a constant threat. Like they're always lurking around the edges of this world. I see. So the magic is almost like a defense against this encroaching horde of the undead. Precisely. They even write... Hold on, let me find the exact line. Zombies could kill until the population is nil, but the magic holds them back so they don't attack. Wow. It really highlights how crucial magic is to the survival of this world, huh? Totally. But it's not just about fighting off zombies. Forrest also dives into how magic exists in nature itself. Oh, now that's fascinating. Like how nature itself has an inherent magic to it. Exactly. They have this one line that I absolutely love. It goes, in the deep meadows, the land thinks to itself. Whoa, that's a powerful image. Makes you wonder if Forrest sees nature as a conscious entity imbued with its own form of magic. I was thinking the same thing. It's almost like a character in its own right. And speaking of characters, we can't forget the mysterious druid. Oh, yes, the druid. What little we get about them is pretty intriguing, right? Definitely. It's like they're this embodiment of nature's magic. Forrest describes them as, and I'm quoting here, holy magical casting friendly spells caring for nature's creatures. It's like they're the protector of the balance, using their magic for good and healing. Which I guess brings us back to that whole idea of the duality of magic we were talking about earlier, huh? Totally. Makes yeah. you think, you know, if we were to step into Forrest's world, would we be tempted by the scepter of might? Or would we strive to be more like the druid? It's the age-old question, isn't it? Power can corrupt, and magic is a heck of a power to wield. It makes you wonder what choices we'd make if faced with those kinds of stakes. It really does. And on that note, I think we'll leave our listeners with that thought. Yeah, let them ponder on that one for a while. If you could step into Forrest's world, what role would you play? The hero, the villain, or something in between? Let us know.